thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this today. And I sincerely hope that you find some real value here, a few thoughts or ideas that inspire you and provide you a bit of insight. Today, I want to share something with you that I was just talking about with a group of people less than an hour ago. You see, for some of these, I take time to, you know, really sort of map out the details of what I want to share and and figure out uh, sort of uh, side comments and examples and metaphors and all that kind of stuff. But this one, uh, like some of them, I wanted to share with you off the hip uh, because I just was talking with a group of people uh, in a small business uh, talking about communication different ways of inspiring trust and different ways to use communication and all the different media and this kind of stuff. And we ended up talking about something that I thought we were going to touch on, but we ended up doing a deep dive into. And so while uh, the ideas are still kicking around in my head, I thought I would share them with you today. And they are about the idea of taking yourself seriously and also the idea of not taking yourself seriously. One of the problems with so much self-help stuff, I find, is it takes a good idea or a notion and turns it into almost a religious tenet, a platitude. It tries to be so extreme and tries to be so, sort of, I'd say, unrelenting in the truth and power of what it's saying that it becomes almost a self-parody. My experience is almost any good idea can be misapplied and be a horrible idea. Almost any good idea can be tweaked or slightly worded in a slightly different way and all of a sudden it goes from empowering to poisonous. So that's why I'm not a big fan. I try hard not to simplify, minimize, reduce what I'm trying to share to pretty much the level of a cartoon. I try not to do that. So having said that, Today's theme of this notion of taking yourself seriously, but also not taking yourself seriously, is my attempt to honor and to respectfully and humbly kind of touch on the kind of dichotomy, the complexity of this notion, that it's not as simple as don't take yourself too seriously. It's not that simple. Years ago, I read, I think it's C.S. Lewis, a great quote, I've shared it with uh, on a bunch of my different recordings is the idea that angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Now, I am not a big believer in traditional angels or even non-traditional angels, but the idea behind that, this notion that when you don't take yourself too seriously, it gives you flexibility. It gives you room to grow. It gives you sky to fly around in freely without self-judgment. I think there's a lot of value in not taking yourself too seriously. In fact, one of my greatest or I think my most effective and favorite tools when talking with people and sharing uh, my ideas with people is a certain amount of self-effacing humor. can really disarm people. And I'm, as a communicator, I'm extremely interested in anything I can bring to my sharing, my presentations, that can open people up to trying on, to receiving, to considering what I am offering. And as a public speaker, as an author, as a performer, you know, one of the things people are looking for, um, if they're to foster any doubt they may have inside themselves, we all carry doubt, is what about this guy's ego? You know, he's got a big, big ego. Is he somebody who takes himself so seriously? It can be a turnoff. It can make the real difference between sharing something passionately and something about a transcendental subject uh, that interests a lot, uh, you know, a wide range of people. It can make the difference between that and a sermon. Taking yourself too seriously. So it can disarm people when you have a sense of humor about yourself. When you have a sense of humor about yourself, it means you can be kinder towards yourself. You can put away the gavel of self-judgment and kind of go, you know, hey, you know, I'm just me, warts and all. And the warts and all expression, even that I do have some ironically judgment around because warts suggest something um, unpleasant. I don't find or believe that my limits, and I got plenty of them, are unpleasant. 
They can be ineffective. They can be poorly timed in situations for sure. All of my limits and my skewed looking at things, my myopic perspective. And again, I have lots of that stuff like anybody else. But I don't want to think negatively of it. Right? Who am I ultimately to judge me? There's that idea too. However, I started this by talking about what I believe the importance of not just not taking yourself uh, too seriously, but also taking yourself seriously. And this is what came up uh, with this talk I had with these people today. Uh, it was a great conversation. Uh, you know, nothing better than uh, sharing my passion with people who share their passion. And all of a sudden, we're dropped into this really special sharing place. Uh, all the pistons firing, so to speak. There is something to be said for the importance of taking yourself seriously. Certainly from a communications point of view. If you don't take yourself, your message, your perspective, your pitch, whatever the context, you're talking with your boyfriend, uh, you're talking uh, with someone at work, you're talking with a prospective client, uh, you're talking with anybody. If you don't take yourself seriously in some way, odds are they will not either. People follow your lead time and again in that regard. You set the context with what you say and how you say it. And obviously, if what you're, if everything you say is, is comes across as a bit of a joke, as a bit of a, hey, here's a, something I haven't put much thought in, a, here's sort of a brain fart I had the other day, then that's how people are going to take it. There's also the relationship to yourself, not just as communicated to others, but also between you and you. If you don't take yourself seriously, then it's going to undermine you know, how seriously you take yourself, right? Taking yourself seriously can be tricky though because that's exactly where you can fall prey to ideas of uh, arrogance and self-import. Now, luckily, these are usually just expressions, are not, not that they're minimizing the challenge of these, of insecurity and self-doubt. Um, they are warped, they are distorted expressions, really embodiments when you take yourself too seriously, when you think tragically for a moment that you're somehow superior to the other people in the room or that your uh, perspective is somehow more valid or more important or more insightful and all this stuff. Now, definitely you can know more around a subject than other people in the room, okay? There's no debating that in my mind. You can know more, you can be more, more knowledgeable, you can be more experienced, but Arrogance and self-import don't usually stem just from knowledge base or experience base. They're, you know, they're expressions of more underlying insecurities that don't have to do with quantity issues of knowledge and experience, uh, but they have to do with qualitative notions of somehow, at the end of the day, somehow being, like I mentioned earlier, superior, uh, inherently smarter. Um, than um, the perspectives and the people around you. And that's the stuff, obviously, you want to avoid as best you can. Now, I've sensed that myself in moments of insecurity, uh, you know, particularly as a younger person. I definitely had uh, my moments of arrogance um, and condescension. I'll still, when, get, when I get mad or frustrated, I can still drop into a bit of condescension. And I see that myself. I don't judge it. I go, oh, okay, there you go again, Jay. A little bit of condescension dealing with your frustration, feeling overwhelmed in a moment. That's understandable. Lots of people do it, Jay. Uh, you may want to, I don't know, minimize that because it's not helping you and it's not helping anybody around you. Take a breath, maybe uh, respond in another way. Because I think feeling overwhelmed or feeling insecure or feeling attacked, these are all uh, very primary feelings and uh, I think they're very understandable. I try not to fight them or deny them. What I look at is how I respond to them. I think that's where I can maybe have a bit of breathing room in that, uh, in some ancient cycle, if you know what I mean. So taking yourself seriously, how do we do that? And for me, it's about really, for me, about thinking of the parameters of what it means to be a human being. You know, I think it's precious. I think it's important. My life is important, okay? And I don't think it's important just to me. I think it's important to the people that I encounter. I think there are things I can do with my life that can really influence other people positively or negatively. 
And when I consider that my life is important, and in fact, I would go so far as to say, and this is an idea I've shared before, and I still some days have a harder time believing it than in other days, is that I think my life is as important as anybody else's life. I think I have, with it comes responsibility, and I have, a, I think my life has the, uh, enormous potential uh, for good uh, and not so good. And that's a whole other idea, this notion of believing that your life is as important as anybody else's life. Uh, so I don't want to do a dive into that right now, but that's directly to related to the idea of, damn it all, darn it all, gosh darn it all. <laughs> I'm going to take my life seriously. I'm going to take me seriously. Not more seriously than other people. So it's about this balance. Like I said, both if you want to be an effective communicator and also regarding your relationship between you and you and trying to nurture, you know, if not your best you, certainly a better you today. Uh, more co- and be compassionate with yourself. It's not about being demanding or being hard on yourself, being a hard ass. And my standards are pretty high. And that comparative evaluative crap that I think gets a lot of us into trouble. Instead, it's about, yeah, just taking it seriously. And not just thinking that your life or this day is something that has no potential or no inherent value. So taking yourself seriously, I think, is very important. Just as, as I mentioned earlier, not taking yourself too seriously. Especially regarding that extremely uh, primary relationship we all have with ourselves. So being gentle on ourselves, humor can help with that. Uh, Understanding that nothing we do will ever be perfect. Um, I find having a sense of humor about myself almost ironically can give me the room, the sense of security to give my all to something. To really... You know, as they say, try something and give it your all requires enormous courage, especially if you know that the results are never perfect. So where does that courage come from? Where can we give ourselves and how can we nurture in ourselves um, a sense of not forgivingness, but certainly room to so-called fail and not having the stakes set too rigid or too um, theoretically high? So having a sense of humor about myself can really help me with that. So there you have it. A few thoughts about the paradox or really the balance between the importance of taking ourselves seriously, but at the same time, in some regards, to paraphrase C.S. Lewis, taking ourselves lightly. I hope uh, today, as always, that the uh, words uh, help you in some small way. They inspire you. They plant a seed. Um, Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time and listening to my thoughts today.